Hey friends, Mindy here. I have a process video for you today. I was asked on Instagram to show a way to kind of cover a spiral bound book like this with fabric, uh, just to give the cover a little bit more interest. And so today I'm gonna show you a really, really simple way to do this, just using some fabric. This is some vintage fabric from a house of books and some double-sided tape. So um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but without having to disassemble the book and pull out the covers and all of that, um, I just wanted to show a really quick and easy way to do this. I'm not being super picky about how I measure anything or anything. I'm just cutting apart this fabric. So I'm going to start with my um, back cover actually because I have this little scrap piece of fabric that I want to use. I'm um, just kind of deciding where I want this floral image to be. Um, obviously if you had a different kind of pattern you would be able to do this but what I'm basically going to do is just run this fabric up near the spiral part um, because I'm going to put another piece of fabric that's going to wrap around that spiral so I'm just using some double-sided adhesive this is the scrapbook.com version score tape has a good version this is super super sticky double-sided tape of course you could use um, heat and bond I've done that with other journals that I've covered you could certainly do that I just felt like this would be a less finicky way since we're dealing with that spiral on there as well um, so I'm just going to pull back this first release paper of this one um, and then I'm just going to get this one started just a little bit here and then I'm going to line this up as close to those rings not overlapping the holes I don't want anything to interfere with that and then I'm just going to push that down and then I'm going to pull off the other release papers and then I am going to burnish this down really well that's kind of the trick with using um, double-sided adhesive with a project like this is you really want to make sure that you're burnishing it down really well so that um, it adheres really well but this is super sticky um, adhesive so you could certainly use a fabric glue if you wanted to um, just make sure that you have a thicker fabric for that so that your fabric um, glue doesn't seep through. So now I'm just going to trim off the edges. I'm also going to trim a little bit out of the corners just to help with some of the bulk of that. Um, just like I've done with, you know, every other book that I or journal that I have covered. Um, I just find it, it helpful to do that. Now I have a more narrow version of this tape as well. Um, again, here you could use fabric glue if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going super quick and simple for this project here. And I'm just going to go around the very edge of the cover. I'm not applying this to the fabric. I'm just doing it to the cover. And then um, we're going to wrap it around into the inside of this. So I'm going to burnish this adhesive down really well again. And then I'm going to start with the long side because um, you always kind of want to work opposite. So I'm going to start with this um, long side and then we'll do the top and the bottom. Um, and that just gives that nice mitered corner there. I am going to pull out some fabric tack, um, adhesive. You could use, you know, a lot of times I'll use Helmar 450 quick dry or, uh, it's some kind of solvent based adhesive basically, but, um, just here in this corner where I don't have any score tape from where I had folded over the fabric already, um, just to make sure I have a good bond there. Um, and I'm not worried about it seeping through or anything because actually my fabric is pretty thick. So, um, but I'm just adding a little bit there in the corner. Of course, like I said, you could do this whole thing with Fabri-Tac if you wanted to. Um, I just wanted to use the double-sided adhesive. I kind of find, I find the, fabric tack a little fussy sometimes. So um, I'm just trimming off those corners where I got a little bit of a string there. And then this is basically how that's gonna work. We'll come back and put a liner in there to kind of cover up all of that inside. Now you could open this spiral bound binding up um, and then you could rebind it. Like if you have a cinch, you could make your own covers. There are a lot of different ways to do this, but I was kind of operating under the premise that maybe not everybody had a cinch machine or just kind of wanted to do something a little bit more simple. So sometimes if you try to open up those rings, it's hard to get them back um, to close properly. And then your sp it kind of inhibits the way that your spiral works. So um, I just trying to keep this as simple as possible. There are certainly a bunch of different ways that this can be done. Um, in fact, if you'd like to see some other ways, leave me a comment in the 
below and we can talk about some other ways that you can do this in terms of like taking it apart and whatever. Um, but some of that just requires like, like I said, having a cinch machine or something like that. So, um, anyway, now I'm just moving on to the front cover and I had this piece of fabric that had the, this beautiful floral section on it. And so I wanted to kind of make sure that that was like in a very specific position on this cover. So, um, which was like the bottom right hand kind of corner. So you can see I, um, I trimmed a huge piece of, of fabric, but um, I can use all of these little pieces that are left over in other projects, so I'm not worried about that. And then I just trimmed it down just like I did on the other side. And again, I am using my um, more narrow, um, I think this is like half inch of this score tape or scrapbook.com version. And my my cover, because I'm working, this is like a Canson mixed media um it's not a Canson. I'm sorry. It's a Strathmore um, mixed media paper. So this cover here is not super, super thick. So I'm going to be just a little bit more careful when I'm wrapping the, um, when I'm wrapping the fabric around, I don't want to kind of bunch up or fold the cover cause it's just not super thick, but adding this fabric to the front of it is going to help actually kind of sturdy up this cover a little bit as well. So again, adding a little bit of fabric tack there in the corners as I'm wrapping this around. Um, and then where my corner didn't meet up very nicely, I just trimmed off a little bit of that excess fabric. And then you can see here, I'm just covering all of that up, just making sure not to cover the holes. Um, and then this will work for my outside cover. And now I need to work on covering the spine. Of course, you know, you could, uh, always you could you could paint these or you know do a million different things but um, I wanted to wrap this with some fabric so I have this scrap this is also some vintage fabric from a house of books and this <coughs> excuse me this fabric is a pretty thick fabric but I need this one to be nice and square so um, I am using my Tim Holtz ruler on the steel side and I have a um self-healing mat and my little rotary trimmer there and I'm just going to cut a straight edge this is going to be the very top section and then I'm going to kind of roughly measure this and then I will trim that bottom section I want it to be the exact height of my journal you could cut this in a way that um you had a longer piece that would go kind of down inside the spiral to kind of wrap around but I didn't want anything inside my spiral really to kind of impede the function of it. So I'm just doing this and this is a really good um, fabric to do that. If you're worried about your fabric, there is a, a glue adhesive called, um, what is it called? Seam check or something like that, that you can add to um, it. Just like, I just had the, it in my head five seconds. So I can't remember what it's called, um, but it will prevent it. Fray check. That's what it's called. It will prevent it from fraying. Um, you can just add a little bead of that along the edge, but I'm not worried about this with this particular fabric. So I'm just kind of lining this up, trying to get an idea for where I want this. Um, to go and then I'm just going to pull out my double-sided adhesive again so I'm running this right up along kind of to the closest edge where those holes are and my fabric is a little bit bigger than this but we're going to take care of that at the end right now I just want to get this kind of in place so I want to make sure um, especially because my my piece of fabric has a vertical line to it I want to make sure that this is nice and straight so I'm putting this on there and then I'm just going to rub this down into burnish that down into that adhesive so that it, it sticks um, and then I'm kind of using that to kind of measure where I want now I'm not wrapping this part super super tight i want my spiral to still be free and and work and function so um i'm kind of getting an idea for where this is going to line up close to um so that it's kind of the same equidistant on both the front and the back cover and then i'm just going to trim this down here again using my rotary cutter and then uh, if you can cut in a really straight line you know use your scissors but the, the rotary and the blade it was just easier um, and then I am going to do the same thing on the back cover I'm going to add that adhesive here right up next to the holes on the cover and then um, I'm going to pull that fabric around but again I don't want this to be too too tight so I'm actually going to kind of nudge it just a little bit so that it's a, just a, has a little bit of looseness to it so it's not wrapped completely tight around there you can kind of see I had moved it just a little bit and then um, I'm just doing this little section at a time and then to make sure that everything is nice and straight 
pulling that release paper and then that covers my cover and you can see my cover will open it will fold back on itself even there's going to be a little bit of you know where this fabric kind of folds back on itself a little bit of you know extra fabric in there but it still it still functions is my point um and I would use it oh you know fully open anyway that's just me and then where the edge of this fabric did not have any of that score tape I just went along with a bead of the um Fabri-Tac glue and glued that down so that's nice and secure on there and now I want to add some liners to the inside to cover up you know the edge of that um, fabric so I'm just using some paper this is actually some old by the Wilfer God paper that I've had in my stash for a while and I just trimmed it down um, just kind of using the measurement for where the edges of the fabric are and then um, trim it down I'm going to cover it in this double-sided adhesive just like we did with the fabric and then um, I'm gonna just kind of pull the release papers down just a little bit so that I can really have a way to kind of position this like I said this adhesive is super super sticky so I don't want to accidentally drop it or something because um, it will it will stay stuck so I'm gonna pull these release papers back kind of like little wings and that's going to allow me to really position that on my cover exactly where I want it before um, before committing to anything. So I can get it lined up here and then I'm actually going to push down where that adhesive is and then it will hold it in place while I pull off the, um, the release paper for the rest of it. And then um, you can see then I can just drop it down and then burnish that down really well again with my bone folder you could use the back of your scissors or whatever um and then that's going to be nice and secure on there and it covers up all the rough edges of that fabric so i'm going to do the same thing here on this back cover again just burnishing it down after i've applied the adhesive and that is going to be it that is my little journal that is covered in fabric this is some mixed media paper on the inside you can kind of see down in there this is what i was talking about where you could kind of cut a piece that you could fold down on the inside. I just didn't want anything down in there in case I want to tuck a pen or whatever down in there, I can still do that. So um, anyway, if you liked this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and until next time, bye.